How's it going? I'm Polar Crest, going to be playing Everlasting Summer. A uh, new free game off of Steam, uh, indie game, of course. Fair, I'll give it a try, so let's see how this goes. I don't really know what to expect, so hopefully the volume is good here. I was having that dream once again. That dream. Same thing every night. But it's all forgotten in the morning, as usual. Maybe it's for the best. Only a glimpse of memory will remain, of gates half-opened, as if inviting me somewhere, with two frozen stone pioneers standing close. And also that strange girl who keeps asking me. Huh? What does she keep asking you? <clears throat> will you come with me? What does that say in the back? Kolb... Kolbahog? I guess this is made by Soviet Games? I'm guessing that's Russian? Alright, let's continue here. Come. But where? And why? And where am I, anyway? Of course. If it all would have happened in real life, I would have certainly been scared. This much is sure. But this is just a dream. The same one I see every night. There must be a reason. You don't have to know where or why to realize something is really happening. Something desperate for my attention, since everything that surrounds me here is real. As real as things in my own flat, I could open the gates, hear the hinges creak, brush the crumbling rust away with my hand, inhale the fresh cool air and shiver from the cold. Do they call apartments or houses in, in Russia flats. I know they do in like Britain and that kind of place. Flat. It's such a weird thing to call your home. I could, but to do that, I would need to pick myself up, make a step, and move my hand. But this is a dream. I understand that. But what of it? What would change my understanding? Because here, it's just like on the other side of the cracking screen of an old TV which struggles to fight against the static noise and strives to show its audience everything without missing a single detail. But the picture is getting blurry. I must be waking up soon. Dot dot dot. Maybe I should ask her something. The girl. What's her name? About the stars, for instance. Why the stars, though? I'd rather ask about the gates. Yes, the gates. She would be so surprised. Or better, why dot over I was called a title. A tittle? What? But dot over a J was called a superscript dot. You are insane, whoever this is. Nice letters. As if they don't exist anymore. Still, what do letters, gates, and stars have to do with this place? Because if every night I am having this dream, which will be forgotten soon anyway, I've got to look for answers here and now. And there, if you look carefully, you can see the Magellanic Clouds. Magellanic, Magellanic Clouds, we'll go with that. As if I ended up in the Southern Hemisphere. Dot dot dot. Oh my god, come on. In the dream, there are small things that catch the most of your attention. A natural color of grass impossible curves of straight lines, or your own distorted reflection, while the real danger, which could put an end to everything right here and now, seems a trifle. It's natural, since here you cannot die. I know it for sure, I've done it hundreds of times. But if you cannot die, is there a point in living? I should ask the girl. She's a local, she should know. Yes, exactly. I should ask her about the owl, for example. One strange bird it is, though it doesn't matter. Da da da. <clears throat> Will you come with me? And every time I have to answer. It's the only way. Otherwise the dream will never end, and I will never wake up. Oh, oh, I get, I get to do something. Yeah, let's do it. I will come with you. Every time it's so hard to decide on the answer. It wasn't that hard. Where am I? What am I doing here? Who is she? 
why does so much in life depend on this answer? Or maybe it doesn't. It's just a dream after all. Just a dream. Woot, continuing on. Keyboard. Click. Um, what's going on? I'm gonna click. Nothing happened when I clicked. Oh, oh, look at that. I saw that. I saw what you're looking at. It's a bad place. You shouldn't go there. Don't go to the website, it's bad for you. Alright, the computer screen stared at me as if it was alive. You wish it was alive. Blink. I was blinking for you. Sometimes it really did seem to me that it was a conscious of itself. It had its own thoughts and wishes, ambitious, that it had feelings, could love and suffer. You thought your computer screen was... Yup. Okay. As if in our relationship. The screen wasn't an instrument, it was me. Lifeless piece of plastic and textolite. There was some truth in that, probably because the computer provides 90% of my communication with the outside world. Anonymous image boards, some chats from time to time, rarely ICQ or Jabber, and forums even more rarely. Blink. Unblink. People on the other end of the internet cable simply do not exist. They are all simply creations of its sick imagination, an error in the source code, or a kernel bug, which started living a life of its own. <laughs> it's a very odd game. A light like a weird ceiling candle holder. If one looked at my existence from the side, such thoughts would not seem so mad, and a psychologist would surely give me a bunch of sophisticated diagnosis and maybe write me a doctor's referral to an asylum. with no trace of repair or semblance of order in it, and always the same view out the window on the gray megalopolis. We'll go with that. Running somewhere, day and night. Such are the conditions of my life. Music. Blue. Well, of course, it didn't all start like this. I was born, went to school, and finished it, like all the others. I was accepted at the university, where I spent a year and a half trailing and struggling. I drifted through several jobs. Sometimes it was working out quite well. Sometimes I was even getting decent money for it. But it all felt like it was not mine, as if taken from another man's biography. I wasn't living a life to its fullest. It was looping on and on, in mono... man... mono... Monotonous circles, there we go. As in the Groundhog's Day movie. That is a great movie. If you haven't seen Edge of Tomorrow, you should see that movie. It's really good, even though it kind of plays on that idea. Anyways, it's just I had no choice in how to spend my day. And every day repeated itself. A same vicious spiral. Also, if you haven't seen Groundhog's Day, you should watch that movie too. It's a wonderful movie, man. A spiral of emptiness, misery, and despair. For the last few years, I just sat in front of the screen all day. Sometimes there were menial jobs, sometimes my parents helped me. All in all, I was able to provide for myself. No wonder really, since my needs are quite minor. I hardly leave my home, and my communication with other people almost entirely consists of online correspondence with the anonymous, who have no real name, no gender, no age. So, in brief, quite a typical life of a quite a typical antisocial, is that supposed to be quiet? Of a quite, of a quiet, I think it's supposed to be quiet, I don't know. 
antisocial person of his time. I don't know. Kind of Donnie Darko on a minor scale without doomsday related visions. Also a fun movie. Maybe some highly respected director will make a movie about me. Doubt it. And it will become a classic of a modern drama cinema. Or I will make one myself. However, what's the point of fooling myself? I tried many times, but couldn't even come up with a simple script. I have also tried learning many other things. Not gifted enough to draw. Programming got bored. Foreign languages takes too much time. The only thing I loved doing was reading, but still I would never have called myself a scholar. Perhaps I was an ace in watching anime and grandmaster of lame internet jokes. If I were to get paid for it, I probably would be a happier person, and a richer person too, but I doubt it would fill the hole inside of me. Ooh, pretty. What town does that look like, I wonder? Today was another typical day of a typical loser's typical life. Well, that's not a good attitude. And today is the day when I have to go to my university reunion. Frankly speaking, I really did not want to. And what is the point? Time I spent with them was so short. However, I got persuaded by a friend, my former university mate, and one of the few who kept in touch not only through the internet. Is that the 10%? that you spoke of. This isn't so much a game as it is a PowerPoint presentation. Maybe things will change. Sounds like he's farting while he's walking. This looks like Japan. A frosty evening. Okay. Bus stop. Waiting. I never liked winter. Though hot summer is not my season either. It's just that I see no reason to point out any particular time of the year. It does not matter much what weather is outside, since you spend 24-7 at home. The bus today was running so late that I was about to curse it all, and spend the last few hundred rubles for a taxi. The idea of returning home didn't cross my mind for some reason. As usual, millions of thoughts flew through my mind, but there was not a single useful one to seize. Such thought, that you could bring to existence, give it a shape, turn it into an idea, and put it into practice. Maybe I could start my own business, but where would I get the money from? Or maybe I could go back to working in an office. No, no way. Maybe I should try freelancing. But what skills do I have? Who needs me after all? This is gonna be some weird suicide game. Is this what's gonna this is what this guy's very depressing. I suddenly remembered my childhood. Or rather, teen years. The time when I was fifteen, seventeen years old. What exactly why exactly those years? No idea. I guess it's because back then everything was so much more simple. It was easier to make decisions so complicated now and so simple then. Waking up in the morning, I knew exactly how my day was going to pass, and I was so eagerly looking forward to the weekend. Then I could get some rest and have time for the things I liked. Computer football, going out with friends. And then, I don't wait, I don't see this guy really liking football. Doesn't seem the type. Whatevs. Or going out with friends. And then, at the beginning of the week, I take up my studies again. Back then, there was no such worrying questions as why, who needs it, what will change if I do it, or what will not change. I wonder if I can do this with the key. The, I can do it with a space bar. Amazing. That makes my, my time so much easier. A simple life stream, so casual for any normal person, and so odd to myself today. That's loud. Careless childhood age. I'll press it softer. It was also then that I met my first love. Her appearance and character have vanished from my memory. Only her name remains, like a brief line from a social network profile, along with the feelings which overwhelmed me when I was with her. Affection, tenderness, desire to care for her, and to protect her. Sadly, it didn't last long, imagine that. Today I can hardly imagine something like that happening. I would probably like to meet a girl, but I don't know how to start a conversation, what on earth to discuss, and how to attract her. 
Well, I haven't met a suitable girl for a long time, but where could I meet one? The sound of an engine working brought me back to reality. The bus, ah, uh, bus pulled over. There was something abnormal about it, I thought. Then again, doesn't matter. Only the 410 runs this route. Or route. Street lights passing me. It is as if their cold light sparks inside of me, trying to light up feelings long dead. Or just light up the street, but, or maybe not sparks, just wakens them. Because those feelings, they have been, they have been living in me for a long time, quelling down and waking up again. The driver's radio was playing some very familiar tune, but I wasn't listening to it. I was watching the cars passing by through the fogged up window because people are always rushing somewhere, chasing something they need, stuck in their own little worlds. Why would they care about mine? They probably have their own serious problems, or maybe they have much easier lives. You can't know for sure, since all people are different. Or aren't they? Sometimes someone's actions can easily be predicted, but if you try to look inside his soul, you will only see impenetrable darkness. Da da da. The bus was approaching downtown, and my thoughts were interrupted by the bright city lights. Hundreds of ad boards, thousands of cars, millions of people. I was watching this light show, and somehow I got terribly sleepy. Blink. My eyes closed for just a moment, and then... The dream? Are we going back to the dream? Because that would be exciting. Maybe I'll get to click on something. No. No. So we just get to basically watch all the stills from before in motion now. In music, we get to listen to music. <clears throat> well, hello there. Oh snap. Uh, I'm not, I don't know how to say her name at all. I'm liking where this is going. Aha. This is the best bus ever. She is not of age. Yeesh. Can't say her name either. Is this going to turn to be some weird dating sim? What in the world? Blink. I'm guessing that says Everlasting Summer. My guess. I'm pretty sure I clicked English somewhere. I must have. I don't know. Day one. Creepy music. Bright daylight struck my eyes. At first I didn't pay attention, as I wasn't fully awake yet. On their own, my legs carried me towards the door. Semyon, what? Damn, looks like I fell asleep and I missed my stop. But there were no doors. I looked around the bus and realized that it wasn't a good old worn out Marco Polo. Instead, the bus was a Icarus model and new. I was frozen in shock. How? What? Am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? No, I must be dead. I touched my body wildly, slapped myself in the face a few times, struck the back of the front chair with my forehead. It's clear, either I'm still alive or, being dead, you can still feel the pain. But how could all this happen? Maybe I was asleep for too long and ended up in the bus depot. <coughs> Excuse me. And then what? Did they put me into another bus? I rushed out and took a look around. Greenery, wherever I looked. Tall grass on the roadside, trees, flowers. Summer! 
but how? It was winter just a moment ago. Just moments ago, yeah. I had a terrible headache. As if my head was going to explode. Step by step, I started to recall. towards the horizon, forests, plains, fields, lakes, and forests again. I think I was sleeping, but how then can I remember all of it? And then, a gap. Some girl leaning over me. She is softly whispering something to my ear. Then a gap again. And then I woke up here. Who was that strange girl? Or was she just a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better and calmed me down a little. I felt warmth all over, coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Then, I need to find her. And the best way to look for her is to get away from here. I rushed to the left, then to the right, and then stopped hesitating where to go, and finally ran in the direction where the bus probably came from. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Physical exercise does refresh one's mind. Thoughts became clear, and it gets a little, e little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however. I was sitting on the roadside, wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gulping hot air. In any case, the run did its work. The fear withdrew for a while. Maybe I'm really just dreaming. Though after recalling my self-harm, I immediately rejected the idea. Semyon. I, that's his name, I'm guessing, but I am neither dreaming nor dead. A narrow road was running through the field and far into the distance, the exact road from my dream. I must be very far away from home, and it is not that it was winter yesterday, and it is complete summer now. It is about the environment. Of course, the summer is usually like that, green and hot, but here everything is not just like in real life. Everything looks like it was taken from the paintings of Russian landscape artists of the 19th century. The grass is just too lush. The bushes are not like what bushes should be. They are so thick you can't see anything through them, like treetops, honestly. And the trees themselves, the forests, the forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they had closed their even ranks and were now just waiting for an order to advance into the fields and plains. I caught my breath and looked at the bus, which was now barely visible. And that was a good run. Fear took over me once again, and those power lines. There must be people here. But what does it mean? In fact, that means nothing at all. Even hell can have power lines. Yet I doubt it does. Bacon... Baking and roasting in the, uh, the sinners is too old-fashioned. I must have reached the point of no return, after which you should either lose your mind completely or finally try to understand what is going on. And while I still have the choice, I should rather pick the second option. I slowly headed back to the bus. Of course it was frightening, but I'm not likely to find an answer in the fields or the woods, and this wretched bucket of screws is the only kind of link that I have with the real world. Dot, dot, dot. Hey, there's that gate. I should carefully scout the area. A brick wall and its gates crowned with Sovionok sign. Hmm. Statues of pioneers at the sides. And a road sign nearby showing the bus route. Number 410. Means outlet. Sovionok, whatever, means outlet. We'll go with that. The trip's taking a bit too long today. I smirked. A person may start acting inadequately in extreme situations. Something like, uh, wait, something like is probably hap- what? Something like is probably happening to me now. I'm confused with that sentence. This place didn't look abandoned at all. No rust on the gates, no damage to the walls. Outlet. We'll go with Outlet. What could have a name like that? Judging by the pioneer statues, it could be a kid's summer camp, and this camp seems to be working. Of course, the simplest explanation logically explains nothing at all. The strange girl, the altered bus, summer, the pioneer camp, 
Thousands of theories went through my mind instantly, from alien abduction to lethargic sleep, from hallucination to time and space shift. None was worse than the other. But you know, I'm pretty sure alien abduction is pretty bad. But there was really no way to pick a single one. Let's rule out alien abduction. Then all, then it all came to me. I can try to make a phone call. I took out my cell phone and dialed the first number from my contact list. But instead of signal strength bars, the screen was showing a thick cross. All right, there may be no signal in such a backward country place. Though I cannot be the only one who got here. Buses don't go on their own. I checked the bus from all sides to make sure that it wasn't a hallucination. Bits of dirt on the bottom, some rust here and there, faded out paint and worn out tires. No, this is definitely a very ordinary Icarus. Yeah, exactly the kind of bus which takes you to places beyond your understanding if you carelessly fall asleep. What, is, what are all these options down here? Oh, what did I do? What? Oh, is that a save thing? Let's save. How do I save? Save. Double click. Did I save it? What do you do? Alright. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Save. I have saved my game. Alright. What's this thing do? Menu? No, it's not. No. What's this? Back to the... Oh, that's a load. Alright, cool. We, we got that out of the way. I gave a nervous chuckle. It came out by itself, sporadically. Because it wasn't a right place or time to laugh. But where on earth is the driver? I cautiously sat down on the curbstone beside the bus and started waiting, bus. And started waiting. Dot, dot, dot. My patience didn't last long. My anxiety seemed to have reached the top and I started going slightly mad. In such situation, anyone would have probably felt something similar. Aliens and parallel universes were gone from my, from my imagination, leaving only void and darkness. Is this how it will all end? How my life will end? But I wanted to do so much, so many things that I had no time for yet. I was taken over by the idea that was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair. Surely I'm no worse than anyone. God, why? Blink. Unblink. Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started rolling in the grass. Why? What did I do? Why me? But, oh, you were looking at 4chan, that's why, let's just be honest. But my outcries were only heard by speechless statues of pioneers and by a bird on a tree, which immediately flapped her wings and took off, having cried something in its own bird language, as if laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt its after-dinner nap. At last I was breathless with my weeping, and just laid quietly, sobbing from time to time, dot dot dot. <clears throat> after a while I managed to pull myself together mind cleared up a bit, as if terror and the fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, what is all this for? Doesn't look like an experiment either. If this is some crazy coincidence, then it probably carries no threat. Anyway, for now, it seemed there is no danger. The panic was soon gone. Of course, the blood was still pounding in my head, and my hands were still shaking, but at least I could think clearly now. Right now, there is nothing I can really change anyway. So no matter how much I think, or get mad, it would only make things worse. There is no point making guesses until I get some facts straight. In any case, I won't learn anything by lounging about here. This camp. If, of course, it really is a camp. Hmm. Looked like the only place where people could be, so I decided to walk there. And hardly have I reached the gates when... A girl came out from behind them, hi, wearing pioneer uniform. My logic didn't let me down this time, and again, pioneer uniform in the 21st century, and then again, girls here. I froze, unable to make a step. I felt very much like running away, running as far as away I, as I could from this place, far from the bus, gate, statues, and far from this bloody bird with its siesta, 
siesta. Just run. Free like a wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets passing by and winking to the galaxies. Run, becoming a pulsar ray and turning into a vestigial radiation. Run to face the unknown. Or, you could just talk to this girl who came through the gates. Run no matter where, as long as it is far away from this place. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled. I could not help but notice her beauty, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts work despite of consciousness, and while only 5% of the brain is responsible for cogni cognitive processes, the remaining 95% are always busy sustaining life, and in particular, ensuring stable functioning of the hormonal system. I desperately wanted to get less complicated and stop thinking in formal quotes from the encyclopedia, though my thoughts appeared one by one being stupid out of place, as if taken from an internal monologue of a hero of some junky soft cover crime fiction book. Holy crap, this girl steps out and this guy goes crazy. A pretty Slavic, Slavic, Slavic face, long braids looking like two armfuls of fresh hay and blue eyes in which you could drown. Pioneer girl. Hi. You must have just arrived. I will reply because I'm not a weird pussy. Um, yeah. Alright then. Welcome. She smiled broadly. Strange. It looked as if I had just a normal girl in front of me. Bah. I should never have turned here. The woods and fields seemed better. But what shall I do next? Try to speak with her, as if she was a human, or run away, or whatever. The blood was pumping unbearably in my heart, tearing it apart from the inside a little bit more, and the poor pioneer girl would be splattered with the hideous con contents of my skull. What's funny about that? The girl gazed over me. It sent shivers down my spine, and my knees started to tremble. Nuh. Nothing. Great then. Great. What's great about that? Suddenly I felt like letting it all be. The boss behind me, the winter yesterday and the summer today. Take off the itchy pullover and just believe that it was all real. That it was all meant to be. And that it all, at last, was for the better. And you must probably know. You should go to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look. You go straight ahead to the square, then turn left, and you'll see small cabins. She pointed at the gates, as if I knew what was behind them. Uh-oh, what's this up here? Well, you can ask someone where Olga... Oh, Olga's cabin is. I'm not saying that last name. I, um, got it? Of course I didn't. And I got to go. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared behind the gates. It seemed as if for her... I was something ordinary, and all this show with the bus, and the travels, and waking, or sleeping, were troubling only me, while here everything was just like it was supposed to be. Camp leader, pioneer uniform, are they making a historical, a historical reconstruction here? I hope I wouldn't find Lenin standing atop of an armored car in the square, but even that would not surprise me right now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. A mere fifty meters ahead, a small one-story house has popped up on the left side. The billboard near the door said clubs. I was about to come closer. Oh, snap. When the door suddenly opened and a short girl, wearing, pioneer, wearing, a, pioneer, <laughs> wearing a pioneer uniform, came out. Her pretty face gave me an impression of bearing a torment for the fate of the whole mankind with a truly universal sorrow. Really? She gave you all that? As soon as she saw me, the girl froze as if frightened. I froze too, considering what was the best to do, to approach first or wait until she shows me some initiative, or maybe run away after all. Although this last option was constantly suggested only by my self-preservation instinct, at least that's what I'd like to believe. Not the worst human instinct, but one of the far, but one far from being the most logical. If this instinct played poker against deductive abilities, the result would be predetermined. And those deductive abilities, or at least their semblance, were hinting me 
that there was no need to be afraid of this girl. Suddenly, somebody jumped out of the nearby bushes. A girl wearing a bright red t-shirt with USSR written on it. And that's more like CCCP. Such exact reproduction of the age. She looks quite short from the distance, and was probably younger than both Pioneer girls. At the gates, and this girl at the door of the clubs. At last I decided to come closer, but the USSR, as I called her in my mind, jumped to the first girl and started telling something while sawing the air. The other girl in turn seemed confused, looked down and made no reply. I would have probably continued to observe their amusing dialogue, but the USSR <sighs> suddenly pulled something out of her pocket and started shaking it in front of the first girl's face. A bug. This something turned out to be a grasshopper. E e e. Squealed the first girl. She must not. She must be not too keen of insects, as she instantly rushed towards where Lenin presumably made a speech about the accomplished workers and peasants' revolution. That's to say, towards the square. The USSR glanced at me, grinned playfully, and dashed after her. Not a bad start of the day. I have absolutely no clue where I am besides that. There are some kids here, role-playing pioneers. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my home. It might even be a different reality. And this was indeed a reality. I mean, everything around me seemed so real, if a little embellished that I was starting to fall into thinking that, in fact, my precious, li precious life could have been just a dream. <clears throat> and what should I do now? Dot, dot, dot. I was picking the cracks in the tiles, which paved the pathway, and stared aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I have to come up with some decision. That's when I recalled myself rolling on the grass, weeping. I cringed in disgust. Perhaps it's another instinct. When all energy for whimpering and self-pitying is used up, the body either goes into hibernation or mobilizes its reserves. Mine seemed to have chosen the second option, because out of the blue I got this determination to figure out what was going on. And in order to do that, I had to act like a man, like a human, to maintain the dignity of a representative of my own world. <clears throat> I followed the path, to the left and to the right, which stood small cabins, apparently homes of the local pioneers. Actually, they looked quite cozy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I never, I never, I have never been part of its children organizations, neither the pioneers nor even the younger October children. I imagine the daily life of a typical pioneer camp a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks. Wake up call at six o'clock played by a siren. One minute to make your bed, then joining formation at the drill square. Or wait. Could I be confusing it with something else? I was suddenly hit on the back. I staggered about. I staggered, but remained on my feet. Turned around and prepared to become a hero. And he and he what? Become an hero. On while fighting for my life. Hello. But all I found was another girl standing before me. My mouth hung open in surprise. Pick your jaw up off the floor. I closed my mouth. The same pioneer uniform, but it looked, let's say, provocative, the way she was wearing it. Like all the girls I had met here before, this one was rather cute, but her overly arrogant expression killed any desire to get to know her better. So, you're new here. Dot dot dot. Fine. See ya. She dashed a threatening glance at me and locked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn at the corner. Who knows what else she might have to have been up to. The most interesting thing was that even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. She did not give me the feeling of some deadly danger, except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. At last, I managed to make it to the square. There was no Lenin on an armored car, although one could really expect something like that after all that had happened. Instead, however, a monument to a certain comrade towered in the middle of the square. The letters on the pedestal read, Genda? Must be some big figure of the party. 
There were some small benches at the sides. It's quite cozy here. Where did that girl tell me to go? To the left or to the right? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And why am I going there anyway? Ah, right. I decided to pretend to be normal. So to the right. Through a small grove. I walked to a pier. I must have taken a wrong turn. Oh, wrong way. I turned towards the voice. Hello. That first girl stood before me. I did tell you to turn left from the square. And where have you gone? She changed from her pioneer uniform into a bikini. Oh, I still haven't introduced myself. My name is Slavia. Actually, the full name is Slaviana, but everyone calls me Slavia. So can you. Um, yeah. I still feel a bit confused, so I cannot come up with any more meaningful answers. And what's your name? It felt like she could see right through me. Um, I, ye, Semyon. Nice to meet you, Semyon. Alright, I'm almost done here. Could you wait here a minute? I'm going to change and we'll go to Olga. Yep, together. Agreed? Agreed. She ran out. She ran off after those words, and I sat on the pier and let my feet hang into the water. I was wearing heavy winter boots, but in such weather, there was nothing wrong in getting my feet wet. Furthermore, they let me cool myself a little. Looking at the river, I was brainstorming and processing everything that has happened. If this is some kind of conspiracy, it is a weird one, even too friendly at times. No, it really looks more like a random event. Some entirely incomprehensible random event. Shall we go? Slavia was standing beside me, dressed in a pioneer uniform again. Let's go. I've been here for a very short time, but of all the people I've met, she looks the least suspicious. However, this fact has already sus- What? This fact is already suspicious by itself. We walk to the square. The USSR girl and the girl who hit me on the back were there, chasing each other. Is it some kind of game they're playing? Ooh, Uliana, enough running. I'll tell everything to Olga. Aye, aye, Captain. I decided not to question Slavia for a while about what was going on and about the local residents. Better first reach this mysterious Olga. Sounds like she's the boss here. We're walking past the rows of almost identical cabins some of which looked like fat bear beer barrels, while the others looked more like household sheds. Finally, Slavia stopped in front of a smallish one-story one cabin. It looked like an artist's painting, the fading paint chipping here and there with age, was sparkling the sun, the window shutters slightly ajar, were swaying in the wind almost unnoticeably, and huge lilac bushes were growing on the sides. It seemed as if this ramshackle hut was drowning in the velvet purple storm, and the lilacs, like some elemental force, were inexorably destroying the troops, troop leader's house. What are you standing for? Let's go. Slavia took me out of my daydreams, and stopped teasing Lena already. <laughs> Rena. Sounds like there's someone inside. Indeed, a moment later the door swung open, and Uliana ran out and dashed past with the same mischievous grin. What was with that scary picture? The pigtailed girl went out next. Don't get upset about her, Lena. So her name is Lena. Gotta be thankful. It's not Rena, at least. I don't understand, but okay. Lena, but I don't. She didn't finish her phrase, blushed, and quickly headed towards the square. For some reason I felt like turning and following her with my eyes, but Slavia said, Come. We entered the cabin. Everything seems pretty normal about that, except for that poster. Inside it looks something similar to what I was imagining. Two beds. You did not imagine this. That's a lie. Two beds, a table, a couple of chairs, a simple carpet on the floor, a wardrobe. Nothing special, but at the same time it felt like homelike it felt homelike and cozy, although this room was almost in the same state of disorder as my own flat. 
A girl standing near the window appeared to be about 25 years old. The nature obviously gifted her with a pretty face and a good body. The least one thing, at least one thing can keep you happy in this pandemonium. The locals are beautiful. You're finally here. Excellent. My name is Olga something or another. I'm the camp leader. Nice to meet you. I'm Semyon. I decided to talk as if I weren't surprised by anything that was going on. She came closer. We've been waiting for you since the early morning. You've been waiting for me. Yes, of course. And when does the next bus come? Because I... And why do you need it? Yeah, right. Why would I need it? Guess I shouldn't ask direct questions. The people here might react to them quite unlike what I'd prefer. And I doubt I'd get any answers. No reason, just curious. By the way, where exactly... Where are we exactly? Our mailing address, I mean. I wanted to send a letter to my parents to tell them I got here all fine. For some reason, I had the desperate idea that if I played along, I would find something out. Oh, but your parents gave a call just a half an hour ago. Send the regards to you. Now that was a surprise. So, can I call them? Because I forgot to tell them something before I left. No. She gave me a sweet, natural smile. Why not? We don't have a phone here. Dot, dot, dot. Then how could my parents make the call here? We've just come back from the district central town. It's there that I talked with them. Ah, now that's how it is. And can I somehow get to the town? No. She kept the same smile. Why not? Because the next bus only, com only comes in a week. I decided not to inquire how the troop's leader managed to get there and back. I would not get no answers anyways. And all this time, Slavia was standing next to me and seemed to find nothing odd in our conversation. Oh, we need to find a uniform for you. I've got absolutely no desire to put on the pioneer shorts or to wear the ridiculous red hanker neck neckerchief. What? However, wearing winter clothes in summer is not a great idea either. Right, thank you. I wonder if I'm the only one here who finds it strange that someone's wearing a coat and winter boots in such heat. Righty right. I'll be off then, and you can get yourself acquainted with the camp. Don't forget to come to dinner in the evening. Having said that, she walked out of the cabin. No, walked is not the right word. She rushed out. I was now alone with Slavia. I must go too. Got things to do. Have a walk, look around the camp a bit. See you in the evening. If there was no catch or menace to that, and this reality, and the person of Slavia, becomes more and more something to be fond of. Dot dot dot. For the first time today, I realized that it was awfully hot here. Although obviously my winter clothes were to blame for that. I took off my coat and dropped it onto the bed. My pullover went after. I was now wearing only the shirt. That's much better. All I could do now was follow the advice and go look around the camp. I'll try to find something out, of, out in the meanwhile. I'm gonna save it. Saving sounds like a good idea. You never know what might happen. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm gonna also take a break. <laughs>